Welcome back to the Forces Employment Charity, the podcast. I am your host, Catherine. And in this series, we dive into the stories, insights, and resources that support service leavers, veterans, reservists, and their families in the quest for meaningful careers and fulfilling lives. In this episode, we're going to be diving into a theme that resonates deeply with so many of us, which is resilience. But resilience is more than just bouncing back after a setback. It's about moving forward, embracing change and finding clarity and self-awareness along the way. So today we're exploring how far resilience can truly take you through a very inspiring story of Annalisa. She's a veteran whose career journey has been nothing but conventional. After leaving the army, she embarked on a path filled with twists and turns from studying law to consultancy, engineering, and ultimately landing a dream role um, at PA Consulting. So Annalisa's story is a testament to the power of resilience, the importance of adaptability, and how seeking support can open new doors. She's now a coach in resilient leadership, helping others navigate challenges with strength and clarity. So imagine setting out on one path, full of ambition and determination, only to face an unexpected roadblock. What would you do? And Elisa, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm re- really looking forward to hearing more about your journey. Um, so to start, could you maybe just tell us a little bit about your background and, and also your time in, in the armed forces as well? Sure. Um, yes, I, I did about five years in the Intelligence Corps um, and and had a great time, uh, a, a range of different roles in, in different locations. And when I was thinking about my future, um, I, I left the army after a relatively short time, um, but I was excited to leave, I guess. Uh, I had this similar experience to many veterans that I talked to. You have a sense of opportunity and kind of excitement and maybe the freedom to do some things that you weren't able to do when you were um, when you were in the forces but also a sense of kind of loss of community perhaps or or familiarity and all the things that uh, that we know kind of uh, provide that sense of family while you're in the in the army and after leaving the army you pursued law which was a very bold move um, what inspired you to take that path and and what was that transition like for you so I spent a couple of years in the public sector um, in a, a unitary authority doing strategy and policy work, which was uh, which was really different, obviously, from the army. But um, but in some ways related, you know, a sort of a project management role, I suppose. Then I was thinking more long term about what I, I might like to do uh, in the future. And I think the opportunity to go back and study was really attractive. I, I like the idea of kind of combining the academic um, rigor of training uh, to be a barrister with the sort of advocacy and the, the people that you might meet and the stories that you essentially get to tell um, and try to find the right outcome for a client. So I think it was the, the mixture of, of, of going back to study and obviously starting again in a different uh, sort of role in a different sector was uh, was a challenging thing, but maybe you know not so challenging when you you only feel as though you've really just started out in your career pathway because I was obviously it, it was obviously quite a long time ago. Um, so I I really enjoyed the opportunity to go back to university. I did it part time over a number of different years because I had a very young family, um, and and I loved it. I loved that opportunity and, and doing a another degree off you know after you're a student just after you leave school um as a mature student that that was really fun uh, i really enjoyed it wow and so from law i mean sometimes despite our best efforts things don't really go as planned um yeah. what happened after after your experience with with that Sure. Well, I did a, a law conversion course, so that was uh, one year full time, two years part time, mm-hmm. and then I did um, a training to be a barrister, which again one year full time, two years part time. So I did four years of study, and I I paid for that myself, and and so that was a big investment in my future. Um, and the the next step after the um, after all of that was to secure a pupillage and pupillages were famously difficult to get but I was 
passionate about that role. I, you know, I thought, um, you know, I had a good chance as anybody and I just sort of, I went for it and I didn't get anything. And you can continue to look for pupillage, you know, year after year. But of course, the the, the students who are coming um, up behind you are also looking. So after a while, I started to feel like my chances were lessening. And I also, I think, started to think about maybe with a more clear eyed view about what it would be like to start a career again from the bottom when I had got to a certain, you know, a certain level in a different profession. So I, I decided that I would just move forward from it and take some of the aspects of the studying and the qualification that I had achieved into something else. So I started a very um, a small consultancy with a friend and I did employment law consulting for a few years. Um, and actually that that was really fun because what I got to do was uh, I got to do some legal work, which um, you know, which I, I'd really wanted to do, but I also got to be self-employed and essentially, you know, manage a small business. Um, and I learned a huge amount by doing that. And that's sort of stood me in good stead, probably for my role now. Wonderful. And you mentioned you decided to just take that forward when you started to explore consultancy. So how did you really handle that setback, though, before you explored consultancy? What, what were there any actions that you took? Um, to handle all the setbacks? Well, I think um, I think you have to think about um, think about the options that you have and mourn you know mourn the thing that you wanted to do that you didn't you didn't mm -hmm. end up doing. Um, but also try to be as you know try to take some of the emotion out of it. you know it was it was a dream job to be yeah. a barrister but it was also uh, uh you know i've obviously since friends who are barristers will tell you the grass is not always greener and and actually there was an opportunity to craft something that probably in the end was much more suited to my commitments you know to raising a family um and to build some building blocks of things that added up to another pathway so mm -hmm. it, it's it's um it's attractive to be part of a, a great profession like the law um and and part of me always will always have enjoyed the thought of doing that um but mm -hmm. what i've ended up doing has been just as rewarding just in, in different ways no I, I completely i completely agree and see your side on that and it's because you put so much investment into that you said four years didn't you um, yeah. I mean, that's a long time, but what's great is that you took those skills that you learned there and put it into something that was a better fit for you in the end, or you made it fit around yourself. So I think that's, I think that's very strong advice there. So running a consultancy and working with a friend sounds like a very fascinating new journey and chapter. Uh, what were some key lessons you learned about businesses, ownership and navigating the world in that sense? I think... I think one of the lessons I learned, um, which I suspect many people will recognise if they start a business, is that you know nothing and you continue to know nothing for quite a long time. Um, you know, that if you start a business, you're, you're performing every role. That's when I started my kind of understanding of, of how to operate commercially and, and how to um, build relationships with clients and how to take essentially what you're, you're doing is is being a knowledge SME and then trying to sell that knowledge and in a one or two man band, then, you know, you have to do all of the things that much larger businesses take for granted in terms of all of those support systems. So I think the thing I learned was that um, I could make a living, you know, I, I would, I would suppose I would get some confidence that whatever happens I can work and I can provide for my family and that was very important to me um so a, a sort of building block of confidence and then really recognizing I suppose at that stage what I was good at and what I like to do as opposed to what I wasn't good at you know and what I didn't like to do and I think that is one of the key in a career pathway that self-awareness, that self-knowledge of your strengths and what you're, what you really don't want to do and can't do is super important. I agree. And how did you get into engineering? I mean, your career took an interesting turn to that. And how, how did a chance conversation lead you to that sector? And what, what roles did you take on? 
So I, uh, I was in the consultancy for about three years and um, I started to think that I wanted to do something a bit more full time um, and I, I perhaps wanted to be part of something bigger. Um, so it was it was literally the school gate conversation, you know, getting to know other parents and finding out what people did um, and, and sort of lots of conversations, perhaps in the pub where you you sort of throw around business ideas and and you exchange um experiences and and understanding what people do and so i ended up um working for an engineering consultancy in a role that was a few things i ended up staying there for quite a long time and in that time i did a number of different roles and that really i think accelerated my thinking as to what i wanted to do in the long term so i started off in a business development role I ended up running their marketing department for a year um, and I then did a sort of program management qualification and was a, a program manager there. So it was a global firm um, and I ended up doing things like digital transformation, software implementations and working with HR, IT, commercial, legal, all of those business functions. And that was super interesting to me because you got to see how the business worked as mm-hmm. the operations side, which is obviously the, the the projects we were delivering for clients. But I got to work with all the the business support functions, and that made, gave me a really kind of clear view of the business model and how people were operating, how we were making money, um, and it developed my commercial skills. I think, and and also I was a client while I was there. You know, we would um, commission work from either consult IT consultants and other types of consultants, um, and then I was able to really get an understanding for how you manage a job, how you manage a project, mm-hmm. and that was a, a really good grounding for for my role at PA. So, and speaking about your role at PA. At some point, PA Consulting became a goal for you. Um, what first drew you to that organization? How did your experience um, prepare you for that role? So somebody I work with in the engineering firm had moved to PA previously. So mm-hmm. this is this is the way things go, I think, when you, you move sector, is that somebody you, you're treading a path that somebody else has trod. Um, yeah. And that was really helpful to me. And I had reached a, a sort of promotion ceiling at the firm I was at. So I think there was an opportunity to think about, you know, do I do I move somewhere where there's more headroom for me? Um, that decision actually was delayed by two years because I had started interviewing and then COVID came along. And actually, I was grateful to have the job that I had mm. uh, while I was while COVID was happening. Um, and I I unlike many other people had a bit of job security for that time um but when when that started to when the covid sort of well we started coming out of that um i had another think about pa consulting and there were a few things that really attracted me it was really the opportunity to get back into supporting the defense world and and to work with clients in defense there were two or three people i knew there who had really spoken really highly of the culture and the people and i started having conversations with different people within the organization about the kinds of work they did and the kinds of roles um so at that point i re-engaged with the forces employment charity i had spoken to them i think variously over the years and i'd i'd known lisa um who works there for for a while Mm -hmm. Uh, And what was really crucial to me is that I needed to get my narrative completely straight around what my value was to the organisation, what my career story was, bearing in mind I'd done lots of different things, and what I wanted to do, my business case for the role that I was going to play. And that's where Lisa was really fantastic because Mm -hmm. we really went through my CV and my experience and she really you know, questioned and challenged and supported my narrative. And and I think that's what she was so great at. Um, and I know I know lots of other people have, have found the same. Wonderful. And so you've had all these different roles now. You've had that experience and now you're at PA Consulting. If you look back at your time from law 
and engineering and now PA consulting. Um, what's the biggest takeaway that you've learned? What's the biggest thing you've learned in your journey that you've now applied to PA consulting? I think from a, a career pathways perspective, we tend to think about jobs and opportunities and interviews as really reflecting our own mm -hmm. ability and success. And, um, uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a some sort of sense that you need to have a very consistent career path and that you people identify very much with that and if things don't work out that can be that can be pretty frustrating but it can also kind of knock your sense of your identity so I guess the biggest thing I would learn I have learned is that this whole sense of bouncing back I think is it you know I would I would hesitate to use the word bounce I don't think people bounce I think what happens is that in order to to keep that sense of identity you have to have small steps of it, of progress towards a goal and you and you need to think a bit not as either i'm on a correct path or i'm not um that's very tempting where i think it's about thinking what's the one thing i'm going to do today that's going to help me get to where i want to be and that leads to my other point which is being clear about what you want to be is really the secret and it's not that easy um it's not that easy to do but having some clarity about your preferences in terms of type of role type of sector type of culture really really helps and there's lots of help out there including um with the forces employment charity to help you get that clarity um because once you've got that clarity of direction you can you can really assess things that you see, opportunities, people you meet against those criteria. And that helps, that saves you a lot of time. And it also helps other people to help you. So when I talk to veterans now, quite often people say, well, this is me, this is what I've done. What do you think would be, what do you think would be good? And that's quite difficult to answer from somebody you, you know, you, you've only just met. If you can say, kind of these are the threads of my career this is what I've really developed a liking for and this is what I think my strengths are and actually this is what I don't want to do um that's really helpful and it's it's more helpful than trying to sort of spread yourself across a number of of different things and hoping something will stick mm -hmm. but do you think that's easier said and said than done maybe so for example you know a veteran who's who tra has transitioned into civilian life, you know, after serving for 30 plus years, you know, that's all they've ever known. Um, do you think it's easier said than done than just saying, okay, I know what I want. I want this. I want that. I'm not, I'm not good at this or that. Do you think it's more about, or do you think it's more about going out there and doing what you did? You had all these different roles. You have all these transferable skills now that you've evolved and, and put into PA consulting. You now, you know, you know your identity now. Um, I was just curious about that aspect of it. I think it, it, it totally is easier said than done. Um, I think you don't have to, it doesn't have to be, uh, you, you don't have to be sure about something. I think what you, what is helpful though, is to be able to tell your story in a way that hangs together and makes sense to the listener. So if you have had a, a really long career in the forces, then um, th uh, there's lots of, of information help out there on how to translate your CV to, you know, to civilian CV. But um, thinking about your personality type, your um, the kind of lifestyle that you want to have at work, what you actually want to be doing at work. And tr and testing those sort of likes and dislikes when you're talking to different people. And the previous co podcast with with uh, Lisa and the team around networking, which was you know fantastic. Um, they they gave lots of of really good advice. Um, and I would just say when you're having conversations with people, it's about um, really listening to to what what they say and what they don't say about what they do yeah. and trying to apply your your own thinking about what it is that you want so it's more about not not what role do i want what kind of life what kind of working life do i want 
given mm-hmm. where I am right now. Yeah, I completely agree. And resilience, you know, it's it's such a powerful theme, powerful theme, sorry, in in your journey and your story. Um looking back on your journey now, what 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 does resilience mean to you? I think we're all we all work for a long time in our lives, you know, we've all got <laughs> there, most people most people have to work for a long time. And uh it's it's a, so it's a marathon you know it's a marathon yeah. not a sprint yes. and I think yeah. you have to you have to arm yourself and protect yourself around that sort of long-term working life and that's why I think self-awareness probably is the most important thing you know if mm-hmm. if you if you know the or the kind of person who can um get up really early in the morning get on the train you know work in the city um and you can you can do that for x number of years um and and that's and because you've got a very specific goal that's just one course of action um there are many many courses of action and so trying to see the real opportunities in the conversations that you have with people and what it might actually be like to work at the place that that other person works i think is is the key to it so i guess trying to find that clarity of direction and bringing your your self-awareness to uh, the conversations that you have and um and working out as you go you'll have experiences where you actually realize you really like doing something or you really don't um and that might be a surprise but you know taking those learnings and and applying them going forward and and also our our personal identities are not our job titles um so you know take take that take that forward don't take you know very easy to say don't take things personally but actually um the success our life success criteria are not the same as our job success criteria well said i completely agree um and now you're a coach in resilient leadership and it shows, Annalise, that definitely shows. Um, what do you what do you teach others about thriving through challenges and uncertainty? I mean, you pretty much summed it up, you know. Um, and also you mentioned earlier, take the emotion you took the emotion out of it when you were studying law when that didn't go as planned. Um, but just for some advice for others, I mean, what what would you teach your clients about thriving through challenges and uncertainty? I think talking to somebody who isn't connected you know within your your role it is a helpful thing um but it is about taking a step back and of course and i've done this many times you may need to get a job to pay the bills and that is that is just as valuable as making a strategic decision to go after a role that you know is your dream job um so i think your the main goal is to do as much as you can the work that you like to do um, with the people that you like to do it with. That that's the goal. So if I talk to people about that, then it's just really trying to identify what that is, what that isn't, and uh, and finding challenging ourselves to find the the best possible route to to doing that. That's what I've. I've been able to do, you know, I currently work with, uh, with a great team and we, we work in helping defense in some of the, you know, some of their challenges and my career goal is therefore not to be an X, Y, Z role in an X, Y, Z business. My goal is to, to do the work that I know now know that I like to do with the people who I rate and the people who I like to do it with. And I think that's the goal. Um, and I just try and help to help other people get to that too. Right. Yeah, to get to that point. Yeah. yeah. And as you look ahead now, what are your hopes for your career? Um, and how do you see yourself continuing to evolve? Well, I think I still got uh, I've, I've still got a huge amount to learn, and I guess that's one of my career goals is to work with people who I learn from. And I work with lots of really smart people who are really good at what they do. We've got a lot of, of really specialized technical people as well. And I love learning about um, emerging technologies and, and how that affects our kind of working lives. 
I still retain an interest in employment law and kind of the employee employer relationship. I love I love thinking about that. So jobs that that help me sort of focus on those sorts of things for clients, I think is is the future. And staying in the defence family because it's brilliant and you get to work with fantastic people and lots of people are trying to do something really difficult. So being part of that and having that as your purpose is a great thing. Thank you, Annalisa, for sharing your incredible journey with us. Your story shows us that resilience isn't just about enduring challenges, but it's about turning them into opportunities for growth and transformation. To our listeners, ask yourself this, what possibilities might you explore if you believed it was never too late for a new beginning? Annalisa's journey reminds us that with clarity, self-awareness, and the right support, new doors can always open. If you're interested in finding support or guidance for your own career journey, reach out to the Forces Employment Charity or attend one of our events. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll explore the journey of finding your fit after service, following a powerful story of a veteran who, with the guidance of his employment advisor, found a fulfilling new career and is now actually working side by side with him to support others on the same path. You won't want to miss this inspiring full circle moment. Thank you so much for listening. I am your host, Catherine, and we'll see you in the next episode.